Hello, my name is Brian Kim, and I'd like to share my technique on Faco Chop. I truly believe Faco Chop is the best technique because it is, it is simple and it is efficient. I learned how to divide and conquer during residency, but I soon realized sculpting is inefficient and increases risk to the intracular structures, including the cornea. My Faco Chop technique has evolved over the years and I'd like to share this with you and hopefully you'll learn something new. So first, always slide the chopper under the anterior capsule across from the main incision and down into the equator. You do the same thing with the Faco tip but it's going to be under the anterior capsule sub-incisionally so they are in direct opposition from one another. You bring the two instruments together and mechanically fracture the two pieces and chop. You pass the chopper all the way across to the other side, under the anterior capsule, around the equator, and with the phaco tip in between the two pieces, you fracture the contralateral hemineucleus, and now you have three pieces, and then you emulsify. During my technique, I do not apply any ultrasound energy or vacuum during the actual chop maneuvers, and because of this, this is safe, in my opinion. Make sure the chopper is under the anterior capsule whenever you chop. During defragmentation, the phaco handpiece should never be used to grab any pieces, especially away from the central safe zone. Otherwise, you risk damaging the capsule or the iris. I never use ultrasound or vacuum unless I'm ready to emulsify and remove the pieces. And make sure the chopper is a main instrument of action. I'll use the chopper to go out to the equator and the phaco tip is going to simply be counterforce so that I can chop. I also use a chopper to manipulate epinucleus and grab fragments that are difficult to, to reach. And you'll see this here. So this first case is a large pupil in a soft lens. I routinely remove the epinucleus, but this is not essential. I'm sliding the chopper under the anterior capsule and doing the same thing with the phaco tip and move the two pieces together and breaking doing the same thing with the right hemineucleus and chopping in the same fashion. As you can see, the main mechanism of action is drawing that chopper under the anterior capsule and around the equator and using the phaco tip simply as a mechanical counterforce to initiate the chop. During my chops, and please pay attention to the phaco dynamic overlay, I have position zero every time I initiate a chop. The only time it's position other than zero is when I'm actually emulsifying and removing the pieces. So this is another example this is a large pupil, but a, a little bit of a denser lens, one plus density. I'm going to drag the chopper out under the anterior capsule, fake tip underneath, draw the instruments together to chop the lens mechanically. Again, this is all under irrigation alone. You'll see that foot position is zero the whole time. I'm doing the cross chop maneuver where I grab the anterior, underneath the anterior capsule and chop the right hemineucleus. At this point, I'm emulsifying but I only initiate ultrasound in vacuum when I am ready to remove the pieces from the eye. Any type of intraocular manipulation, whether it's trying to mobilize fragments or mobilize up a nucleus or spinning the lens fragments into better position are all done with the chopper. Because the chopper is safer, you cannot accidentally phaco or vacuum with the chopper and it also has a thin profile. You saw that I had to go twice to make sure I was under the anterior capsule. And I always lead with the tip when I go around the equator. I like to lead with the tip, push down a little bit to make sure I'm underneath the anterior capsule. And as I approach the equator, I rotate my wrist so that the chopper tip is facing me so that the lens piece will be held effectively. So this is a large pupil, 2 plus density. Again, you see how I point the tip outward, slide underneath, and then I rotate my wrist so that the ch tip is pointing towards me. So now the two pieces are held and fractured. Same thing on 
on this maneuver, I have three pieces now. This quadrant is mobile, and so I'm going after it with the phaco tip. And this is safe because it's mobile. And because this is awkward to approach with the phaco tip, I'm using the chopper to grab it at the equator and sliding it centrally. A big mistake that learning surgeons and residents do is going after pieces with the phaco tip, which is very dangerous and not advised. Using the, ch the chopper to lead the action provides effective removal in a safe way. This is another example. It's a smaller pupil with a 1 to 2 plus density. And just because I can't see out to the periphery should not change my approach because it's the same exact technique. I lead with the tip of the chopper, pushing down, assuring that I am underneath the entry capsule. As you can see, I'm rotating my wrist so that I can turn that tip from away, rotating it so that it's toward me, so that I can hold the pieces as I chop. I use a chopper to grab that piece which is not as easily accessible with the phaco tip and once it's in the middle I can emulsify it easily. I use a chopper to rotate the other hemineucleus towards me. And again, please appreciate during the chop maneuvers I'm on position zero. The only time I'm on not on position zero is when I'm emulsifying and removing the pieces out of the eye. So here we go. Position zero, chopper goes out, phaco tip goes under, bring the two pieces, break the lens in half, grab the chopper under the anterior ch capsule, holding the phaco tip the whole time in the same position, and then I create that second chop. And the beauty of this technique is the phaco tip is not really doing anything. It's a passive player. I'm using it as leverage to help fracture the lens and simply to emulsify. I, I like to keep it in the central safe zone right there, away from the cornea, away from the putcher capsule. I'm using the chopper to mobilize all of my pieces. I'm using the chopper again to rotate the pieces so that they're more accessible to me. I'm using the chopper again, position zero during each of those maneuvers, and then I emulsify. By not using phaco energy during those critical steps and not applying any vacuum during those critical steps, I'm able to provide, in my opinion, safer surgery, less risk to the posture capsule, less risk to the cornea, and less, less opportunity to inadvertently grab the iris or the capsule. So this is again a medium pupil but a, a slightly denser lens, 2 to 3 plus, just to show you that I'm able to do the same exact technique on a wide variety of densities of lenses and pupil sizes. Again, the chopper is initiating all of the action The phaco tip is in the same position the entire time. That was all under foot position zero. Now I'm emulsifying the pieces. You can tell this is a denser lens. The CDE is going up pretty quickly. I'm using the chopper again to go out underneath the anti-capsule just to slide that frag the quadrant towards me and then emulsify. Sculpting surgeons are used to using the phaco tip for most of their action because they're sculpting and then they use a second instrument simply as a manipulator or just to hold the the posture capsule back or to crack. So I believe sculpting surgeons have a tendency to use the phaco tip for more intraocular manipulation. And in my opinion, that is less safe 
you want to use your second instrument to do all of these manipulations. As you see, I didn't quite get around the, the piece, and so I started over just now and went out to the equator and grabbed that last fragment. And this is an example of using the chopper to grab epinucleus. Some people will go after epinucleus using the phaco tip. Again, very dangerous because you can inadvertently cause a posterior capsular tear. And this is the very last case. It's a large pupil, but this is a 3 plus NSC. Again, chopper going out under the anterior capsule around the equator. Same sub incision with the phaco tip grabbing them. You can see the whitening of the of the lens as I'm mechanically breaking them. Again, this is all under foot position zero, irrigation alone, no ultrasound, no vacuum. The cross chop breaks up that right hemineucleus. The lens is emulsified. Again, the chopper is the one initiating all the action, is grabbing that proximal quadrant. The phaco handpiece is in the central safe zone the entire time. I'm not chasing any pieces with the phaco tip. It stays right in the middle. I use the chopper to help access the rest of the lens. The chopper goes out and around to the equator. Again, this is all under position zero during the chops, even with these smaller chops. And then ultrasound and vacuum are initiated. So I hope that you can see with my FACO technique, chopping does not require ultrasound or vacuum. And I think that's an important principle because when I learned FACO chop, we were taught to bury the FACO tip into the lens as we chop. And I think that's because it was thought that we can have better leverage by holding it with vacuum and ultrasound. But in my opinion, that's unnecessary and it's risky. And as you can see, this works quite well, and I hope that you can apply this for your own surgeries. Thank you for your attention.